I want to talk about the other antibody in development. Other formulations. Other formulations. You want to tell us quickly about that? About the G-pants? Okay. The G-pants, as you said, are small molecule CGRP receptor antagonists. Two of them in early development had liver toxicity. They do go through the liver. Um, there has never been a G-pant studied in humans that was in which there was a lack of efficacy. They always effectively terminate migraine acutely. There are currently three G-pants in clinical development. One is Ubrojapant, which was submitted to the FDA early in 2019 and is effective in the uh, acute treatment of migraine, and that's what it will get the approval for next year. Second is Remegipant, which is also about to be submitted to the FDA for acute treatment of migraine, and we expect that that will also be approved within the next year. The third G-pant is Atojapant. That has been studied in a daily dosing regimen for prevention of migraine. Episodic migraine phase two trial was positive with a magnitude of effect similar to monoclonal antibodies. And then to make things more complicated, Remegipant, which has been studied for acute treatment of migraine, is also being studied in a daily dosing for preventive treatment of migraine. Isn't there a fourth one? Uh, not that's actually, well, there is one, BHV 3500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will, uh, it's not clear. I don't know how that's going to be developed. There's one that is going to be studied in a nasal formulation. There's one that has been studied in orally dissolvable tablet. There's another company in, e in England that has a set of G-pants as well. So we're just kind of at the beginning of the second wave of G-pants, and by this time next year we should have two for acute treatment that work similarly to triptans with, with very good tolerability. If somebody's on a monoclonal antibody, would an oral G-pant work to, to control an acute attack? I anticipate that it will work. It hasn't been studied to date. But the reason I think it would work is that these uh, monoclonal antibodies, firstly, they do saturate the system, but not 100%. You're continually manufacturing CGRP. And so at some point, you may have breakthrough levels where CGRP levels are elevated or receptors are unbound. The, the antibodies have an on-off binding. No, absolutely. I will uh, wager you anything. Uh, then I will be forced me, to disagree me, on that. I, because if you look at the kinetics, when an antibody sticks to the receptor, it almost dies on the receptor. It's not like small Unfortunately, molecules. Unfortunately, Steve, you're wrong about this. I, I have got the data. I can prove it. Yeah, no, I, I went through a long discussion on this recently because I was also of the opinion that there was the but suicide binding, but it in fact it is. isn't the case. The bottom line is even when it gets internalized to the receptor, it doesn't get digested, but it gets recirculated. Right. But there's a paper that's in press that hasn't been published yet carefully looking at the binding of the monoclonal antibody to the CGRP canonical receptor and seeing what happens to it. So the first issue is if it gets bound, any receptors are recycled and it was felt that they would be all degraded. They're not, they go back to the surface. And the dissociation constant of all antibodies from their ligon is extraordinarily low. So in a chemical reaction, there's no binding. The only thing, drug I know in other classes DHE, which binds to its receptor, but the antibodies are very tight. And so I think if you have 100,000 molecules bound to an antibody, maybe one will get out. I simply stated that in equilibrium, the unlike small molecules and everything else, the binding is such that 99.9% .9 of the receptor will be bound. Yes, but not 100%. That's why the G-pants will work. No, and think about it. If 99% of the receptors are bound and you have all those antibodies, the little molecules are never going to sneak their way in. Well, no, I disagree. They may penetrate a lot better. I will bet you anything that the G-pants <laughs> will, <laughs> will not work He's got a lot of his artwork. <laughs> in the presence of an antibody to the receptor, but they could work in the presence of an antibody to the ligand. Maybe some people respond better if you tickle their receptors as opposed to squashing them with an antibody. But the bottom line is then, then that you would have to compare an antibody to a receptor, not in combination. So but I'm interested in, in a vote here. We have one and one. How, how do you think it's going to turn out? Will G-pants work with an antibody let's, let's, on board? Wait, let's just start. I'm curious. Bifurcate, receptor versus ligand. 
Oh, now you're getting fancy. No, that's what I said. There's no, I, I think it may make a difference whether they're, all of them target the ligand versus one of them targets the receptor and the other targets the ligand. And I suspect that before we're going to know, someone's going to have to do a safety study. Of course. But do you think either would work? Yeah, logic would dictate why would you block a receptor two ways and expect better results, but we don't know. I'm not convinced that 100% of the receptors are totally inactivated all of the time, especially during an attack, who knows? And with the ligand, it's even more likely, I think, that, we, that you could have success, Agreed. because as you said, you could have a burst of CGRP at the onset of an attack and during an attack, and there's not enough antibodies to do the job, so you've, you've got to have a safety net, and that safety net is gonna be the receptor okay. blocker. I agree 100%, and the, the way I look at it is when you have a CGRP and B released, the concentration is higher, and it has to diffuse out and eventually be sucked up. Yes. That's the situation for an antibody to CGRP itself. The difference is that when you have an antibody to a receptor, for all intents and purposes, it's like a knockout. There's no receptor left. But there is one other possibility. You still have the amylin receptor. And some of the G-pants have affinities to the amylin receptor. And under those circumstances, oh, but to the, under those circumstances, but to the best of my knowledge, if you look at the published data, very little affinity to the amylin receptor. Stu, do you have an opinion? I think if, they're, if they work at all, it's going to be very modest. I mean, we know I that the tryptans worked for breakthrough That's attack. because of the fact that the tryptans work by an entirely different mechanism to prevent the release. Partially different. Oh, entirely different. They prevent the release of CGRP, CGRP, glutamate, substance P, and other chemicals. So as we talked about earlier, if migraine is multi-chemical, we're getting the rest of the chemicals. That's why it works. Thank you for your contribution to this discussion on behalf of our panel. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found this Pure Exchange discussion useful, informative, and exciting as it was for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.